Hello everybody, this is Damian Black here. I am back and have made a couple updates to the list, roughly a third of the deck. Uh, <laughs> a little crazier when you think about it that way. Uh, it's Jeff Thunder for both mainboard and sideboard. Uh, some of the changes are because of things that I saw and comparatively to what I was seeing prior to when I first put this together to jump back in. Uh, first and foremost, I was under the impression that the these lands, the surveil lands, were going to be extremely helpful. Honestly, during the matches, I actually felt like Horizon Canopy would have been a better card, something that I could sack to actually draw a card versus those. Um, getting up to five mana is capable, but the deck runs on three, or it's kind of there, and being able to hard cast that Metamorphosis was ridiculous. Um, or even potentially, I don't remember if I hard cast it now. It's been a week. <laughs> so instead, I have brought in a scrub land. So that one scrub land will fill that out. Uh, the actual thought that I had, but am not going with right now, was to replace this with, I believe it's called Nurturing Peat Bog, or Neutered Peat Bog, or something Peat Bog. And then the white-black version, which I haven't even looked up yet. And have those go from that. But the worry that I have is the amount of life gain. And that is because of other things that we'll get to later. I also didn't feel like Vexing Bobble actually pulled its weight, so I'm going back to the Mox build that gave a little bit more speed. It allowed the 23 land version to be able to consistently drop out a two, one or two drop or two one drops on turn one to essentially be able to ramp yourself up immediately to three mana as fast as possible. And I enjoyed that. Uh, as far as Speaking of Green Sun, the process for Green Sun Zenith, now we only have a couple of creatures, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total that are Green Sun zenith so we've dropped down to one. I don't remember if there was one or two in there. Uh, first and foremost being an additional knight. Knight pulled her weight every time that I saw her still, so going to give her another shot. Uh, I did cut the Reclaimer as well as the white. And that was simply because I never got a chance to really use them. Reclaimer was always a 1-2. I think I, I don't have a memory of Reclaimer getting to be a 3-4. And I don't remember ever using the ability. So essentially, I played Squire for 1, which, I mean, when you look at it that way, isn't bad. But when you look at it comparatively to all the other possibilities that are out there, it's a lot worse. Yeah. So that's gone. Still keeping the goose. Wanted to continue to give this a chance. Uh, had this been a bird, I would have been able to hard cast the... Uh, no, I wouldn't have because I still had to block. So yeah, no, it wouldn't have mattered what it was. Uh, what I'm actually hoping is that with the December bannings, they will take a moment, actually look and realize that Deathrite Shaman would be a good place for... This is a good meta for Deathrite Shaman. It's not so far above the curve anymore that it is just oppressing. Um, and it would give reach to a lot of decks like this, a lot of the more fair decks. And even though the other mid-range tempo-based decks, the, the blue-black, the ninja thing that we saw with the Planeswalker, which I didn't even bother to care about, that was, that was a random thing. Uh, we'll find out if that's a thing going forward and adjust for it then. But it, Deathrite would give that ability, would also put a second one in. Uh, simply because Deathrite is way better than any of the other birds. It produces more than just mana, but it is graveyard dependent, and that's okay. Uh, so moving forward, we also brought in Bill. Uh, Bill is substituting in as the sex second, I was going to say the sexiest Nantuko Springheart. Springheart Nantuko. And in which case, yes, he is. Uh, Bill is definitely the sexier version. Nah. Maybe it's because they're plants. Insects over plants. Let's go. Pokemon rules. So yeah, but it does give us a way to go wide. It does also work with some of the other things that are happening, such as the orc token. If we get something there, we start putting counters on other things. We don't have to put a counter on that token. We can just immediately start doubling its power. So, and it costing five is the high end. That's, that's as far as we want to go. Uh, we're keeping the Curator, even though we had some trouble casting it, we didn't adjust to be able to create more green mana. We adjusted to be able to create more white mana. And that is that should be fine. This should fix enough of it so that we should be able to cast Curator without much of an issue. And having it be able to cost a 
colorless mana should be more helpful. I did make a couple misplays with that on where I was pulling and what I was trying to get, but not a big deal. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have Stoneforge. We're only running two of them. We're running three equipment, two Stoneforge. One of the equipment is actually a creature, the Sash Line. The additional supple effect should help to keep us from getting too caught under with the Sylvan Libraries. So that's where I'm looking at there. Uh, additionally, Stoneforge is essentially another two for one. Uh, being able to get any of these equipment, get being probably the one that I'm least interested in getting most of the time, unless I'm against a, a deck that has a bunch of X1s, and because we don't have a way to go wide. That, that, that is one thing. Liliana and Grist both don't go wide. And so... We have nothing to handle if our opponent puts out 30 creatures. We need something. Jit gives us a way. Batterskull gives us a little bit of defense because of the lifelink. But we ha they are our only wide sources. There's nothing out of the board. There's no Maelstrom Pulse. There's no whatever else removal. I think it's, no, Get Lost is the, uh, the one that gets rid of enchantments and stuff. Yeah. So... That is our yeah, non basic two four basics. That is our pseudo attempt to go wide. It's our pseudo life gain because we've got life gain off of these two. It is also graveyard removal because of the sash lion. Uh, we have two bits of graveyard removal: one going colorless, one going white mana. I thought about returning the keen eyes back down to scavenging ooze, and then we'd have one at white, one at green. I don't want to be color dependent though even though the deck is very colorful there are a couple of ones but everything else is a mana symbol so yeah want to try and avoid that we also have double green double black again it would have smoothed out mana bases a little bit being able to just go one green seeing as we only have one basic but we should be again we should be okay uh, again, this is a beater. It eats up lands and gets bigger. It eats up everything and gets bigger except for instants and sorceries. So, yeah. Essentially an end game piece. One that, while graveyard dependent, can be not graveyard dependent. We'll see if we ever reconfigure it or if we just use it as a creature that's tutorable with Stone Forge Mystic. Jit, again, one of the best ways to go wide against creature decks. And Batter Skull, just a big beater and recurring creature. If we can get, if it gets killed and the Batter Skull remains, we can return it to our hand, plop it back down. It may take a turn or two. Or if we're really flooded with mana, it can happen that same turn. Ideally, it still only costs five, but worst case scenario, it costs eight. Next up, we are putting in, I'm going to go with this one first. Putting Bob back in. Bob is hard advantage, and from what I was seeing, while decks were capable of removing creatures, and we didn't typically have a lot of creatures on the field, single library was game winning. Like, just landing one. I do have... Oh, I took it out. I thought I put one in. I'll have to think about that. I may, I may put a library into the board. I may actually get rid of the vaccine bobbles, but I've convinced myself for right now. Um... We are having issues as far as land goes, so, or not land, uh, what is the word? Clap, 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 um, cards in hand, or hand size. There was no word, it was multiple words. So, increasing our hand size, bonus, forcing them to kill Bob, great. If they burn their removal on the bird, on the arbor, on whatever, Bob starts drawing cards. Library starts drawing cards. It gives us six things that draw cards. We can offset Bob's life loss using the equipment. Hopefully we don't ever flip this. It will happen. And yeah, Bob typically doesn't turn sideways, but has the possibility. I don't think I want to bestow upon Bob a copy Bob, but it's a good thing that we can just say, no, we don't want to make a copy. Or if we do, if we're at a ton of life, we make more Bobs and we just keep going. That can be a thing, and that's okay. 
Next up, we have the two Bowmasters. Uh, the Nadu deck that I faced twice. I felt like this would be a really good addition to take that out. A lot of the things that were happening in that deck I don't like. Uh, mainly that they were able to refill their hands so quickly and effectively. It just gives us something else that we can in response to drop on the field and it creates a danger for them. It also gives the ability to remove any of those pesky little one ones while they're searching for Nadu so they have to count for it off the top. All right. That goes over all of the main board. Let's get the sideboard. As far as sideboard, we're including a couple of different things. We've got a third Bowmaster, just because there is a lot of blue in the meta having another creature. This may or may not find its way into the main board. Bob may or may not be staying as a four of. We'll see. Uh, yeah. It is an interesting time out there. I'm hoping to get a couple games in again over the course of this week if I can get time. There's always time. It's just a matter of when. Uh, but this being a holiday week, we'll see what happens. Uh, I may have time to do the challenge today. I'll have to check and see what all is on the schedule. Uh, but I will continue going forward. Vexing Bobbles, I'm keeping in there because... There's enough combo that still exists that uses Lion's Eye Diamond and Lotus Petal. And being able to grab those and go back through and grab Cabal Rituals and Dark Rituals and anything else, Past in Flames or things like that, force them to go off in a more difficult manner. Like if I can drop this down before they get any Bobbles or anything, or Bobbles or anything, any uh, Lion's Eyes or Lotus Petals, that means they're now playing off of their mana to be able to cast spells. And that seems like a good thing. Uh, other cards that I thought about to go into the sideboard. Force of Vigor, I've still been debating using Terra Sunder. Force of Vigor being free. The number of green spells has dropped, which is why I'm looking at Terra Sunder. It also exiles. And for four, we can kick it and take out anything. So if the game does start going late, we can take out Planeswalkers. We can take out anything that's not a land. I had to look at that for a second. But yeah. Changes from being artifact or enchantment to non-land permanent, which gives it some versatility, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, it is a mana cost, and it'll at least hit the moons. Any moon that hits the ground, we have a little bit against. As you saw last time I tend to fetch basics, I have been blood mooned before. I don't need to be blood mooned again. I've been back to basics before. I don't need to be back to basics again. So if I have an opportunity to get my basics, I will get my basics, and that's just me. Uh, another one was White Orchid Phantom. There it is. It is White Orchid Phantom. Uh, thinking about the Tron deck was where I was going with this, being able to just double white, blow up a land. Or it wasn't Tron, it was Eldrazi. Um, trying to put them off of mana, get rid of cards in their hand. If you go, whether you go first or second, I mean, you have the ability to fetch planes, play diamond, ditch land, white or orbit and phantom, and just sinkhole them with a 2-2 two -two flyer. Flying and first strike. That's even better. So, yeah, that was, that was a thought. It's still a thought. It may end up coming in. I did add the extra white source, so there's a lot more white to go around. Essentially, we've got seven fetch lands, we've got a Caracas, we've got three dual lands, and we've got a Plains plus the Diamond. This may need to actually change back into a normal bird or something else that can that can perform. Um, yeah, and we'll see. We'll see how things go. I think I'm going to give this list a run. I may do another one still with the, this is the original list. Yeah, this is the original list from what I had had. So, yeah. We'll see how things go. One thing I don't like about Magic Online <clears throat> is that if I make any change to this, it just automatically saves. I'd like to have some type of iteration, but it's been years of people asking for features and them not coming. To get this point, they're just maintaining bug patching and adding in new sets, which that's fine. It'd be nice, but I guess that's what Arena's for. Now nah, they won't make changes there either. They just, yeah. 
Either way, I will see you guys next time, likely with this list. Uh, yeah. But also this thing. I think I just copied it one more time. Yep. Got to make sure you don't accidentally overwrite something that you want. So, yeah. We'll give this another go. We'll give it a try. We are a little bit, a little bit light on graveyard. Eight is one of the concerns. Uh, just the three surgicals. We did add the lion to the main board, but essentially two knights. We have nothing super early to be able to fight, so that's kind of a problem. We'll see exactly how much of a problem it is as we progress. Either which way, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.